everyone, my name is Teresa and this is the first edition of the Polkadot shot. So um, a snapshot or a summary of the recent developments of the projects of the community, conferences and announcements around Polkadot, Kusama and Substrate. This is a short monthly snapshot rather intended for non-tech people just like myself. Uh, who don't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, screening all the different uh, Telegram channels, uh, Twitter and YouTube content um, in order to get the latest information, but who prefer to consume the latest um, update in a short version like this video snapshot here. So therefore you won't find an entire list of all the different um, technical developments and every detail about the technical webinars. This is rather intended to give an overview of the general developments where the project is headed towards to to keep the community informed, interested and hopefully also grow the community with that. And the idea is to consolidate all the developments um, in this uh, short video summary, video snapshot that will be also available as audio podcast if you prefer audio over video. And of course, all um, the content will be linked with the respective links in the show notes so that you have the chance to see every single interview into detail or rewatch a, a webinar or teach in. And with this, um, I hope you enjoy the first snapshot, the Polkadot shot May 2020. Enjoy! The development of Polkadot began in 2016 and has launched on May 26, following three years of intense development work, building on the success of Kusama Canary Network, released in September 2019. CC1 is the first candidate for the Polkadot mainnet. It is the hope that it's eventually sele selected as the final Polkadot chain, but there's always a chance that the team will launch a second or even third chain candidate if they deem it technically necessary. The DOT token, pre-sold to 4,000 odd people back in 2017, is not yet transferable. That will happen towards the end of the staged launch process. Also, there are not yet any parachains active. That's the final thing to come over the next few weeks. Gavin Wood, a co-founder and former chief technology officer of Ethereum, led the development of Polkadot along with two co-founders and the team at Parity Technologies, led by Jutta Steiner, the CEO. During the Ready Layer 1 virtual summit on May 6, Gavin Wood explains the Polkadot launch process in his own words that you see here now. We were just kind of thinking how we could maybe um, create the next version of Ethereum um, if we sort of had um, a green field to design upon. So really we wanted to um, push forward with that one way or another. Let's embark on um, something that we think will be complementary to Ethereum 2, a system in parallel that can fulfill things that probably Ethereum 2 is going to be less than optimal at fulfilling, um, and ideally that will interoperate with Ethereum 2 as well. Gavin has also published this Medium article if you want to learn more about the launch. And this blog on the Polkadot website gives also helpful insights about the launch roadmap. And finally, this article explains everything around West End, which is a Polkadot testnet, replacing Polkadot's previous Alexander testnet. This section gives you even more insights from Rob Habermeyer, the co-founder of Polkadot, in an interview with Laura Shin on Unchained following the Ready Layer One event. There is, there is a design space of blockchain scalability. So what Polkadot does is it it occupies a space, a, a point in this design space that's in between something like homogeneous sharding, where you have a bunch of different shards that all execute the same kind of smart contracts and things, and in between something like Cosmos, where you have a bunch of different blockchains that all talk to each other. Each of those blockchains has to be fully sovereign. So there are trade-offs to both sides of that design space, so we try to occupy a, a middle ground where uh, those shards are heterogeneous. We have a bunch of different shards. We split up the work between a bunch of different blockchains that draw security from the same source. But those blockchains are specialized to specific tasks. They don't have to bring their own balances. They don't have to bring their own validator sets, things like that. Uh, so 
as any engineer knows, the closer you can specialize to a specific task, the better your solution is going to be. More general solutions are less efficient. Um, so that's our notion of parachain. So we also embody this notion of build your own blockchain, bring your own blockchain. We built a, a, a toolkit called Substrate, which is for building your own blockchains, um, writing the what we call the runtime, the logic of your blockchain in WebAssembly, in Rust code, uh, and everything else is sort of taken care of. We eat our own dog food in the sense that we've written Polkadot using Substrate as well. Um, so we've launched the Kusama network, which is, uh, it's essentially Polkadot, but it isn't Polkadot. So it's a incentivized, um, real value bearing network for sort of putting through a, a, our, our theses through, through, the, through the hoops. Um, and we're, we're working on deploying uh, the initial implementations of parachains uh, over the next few months. Check out the blog post on the Polkadot website, which compares Kusama and Polkadot, the two cousins. Mid of May, Gavin also gave another talk about chain mergers and acquisitions, which shows quite nicely the M&A tokenomics, especially for Polkadot. The SubZero online conference was really interesting, and you can find the agenda here and rewatch and crowdcast any topics that are interesting for you. Also on Crowdcast was this really interesting talk, especially for beginners, around Polkadot and the connection towards the early internet. Check it out. It wasn't like nowadays where you, you, you have a network connection in your pocket. Uh, if you were in uh, Harrisburg or Philadelphia, for, for instance, well, you would have to, if you wanted to connect to the ARPANET, you would drive down to you know, Aberdeen in Maryland or CMU in Pittsburgh, etc., and that would be the only way to, to connect. Another interesting thing I want to, to bring up here, when this network first started, people really saw it as a way to increase the computational power of these computers. They said, well, if this computer is really good at doing this kind of math and this computer is very good at doing this other kind of math, maybe we can combine them to solve more complicated math problems. Uh, so I think you know, you'll see we didn't really understand what this network was going to be used for when we first created it. But those things are all great to talk about hypothetically, but let's talk about a little bit of the projects that are already underway. So the Web3 Foundation gives away a lot of grants. Um, we've given away over 100 now, and here's kind of a little um, graphic of what's underway right now, which really touches on a lot of those consumer, enterprise, and government use cases that I just outlined on the last slide. So these teams that have received grants from the Web3 Foundation are working on everything you can see on the left from gaming to finance um, to even robotics and um, internet of things in the enterprise space. Um, so this is a graphic. There's also, if you can, if you Google um, web three grants, there's plenty of information you can read. If you're, if you are a developer interested in um, receiving or applying for a grant, or if you're interested in just learning more about all these hundred um, projects here on the right and what they're, what they're building right now. So if you're now convinced from the project, want to learn more about it, or even get involved, I can really recommend the following Crowdcast interview. Involved in this, in this chat today, um, Web3 Foundation Parity Technologies. Did, uh, maybe can you give us um, an overview, um, explain a bit, what's the difference exactly between Web3 Foundation Parity Technologies, how is Polkadot involved in, in, in this ecosystem, to clarify a bit yeah. of, of the overall naming here? Yeah, of course. I mean, this is something that's actually super confusing and, and people who, you know, are really, really up on the space, like, I, I feel like don't even understand this very well. So it, it's good to always clear this up. Um, so the Web3 Foundation is a non-for-profit Swiss foundation, and it's really, you can think of it as the steward of both, like, Polkadot and Kusama. So, like, you know, similar to, like, things like the Ethereum Foundation, the Tezos Foundation, these are kind of the, the not-for-profit foundations behind the network. Um, and I guess when you look at like, okay, like what is the foundation exactly? And like, what do they do? What are they responsible for? Um, it's really kind of primarily the coordination of the community around the protocol. So things like, you know, um, like my role and people, people on the collaborations team, like trying to get like, trying to get people building on Polkadot, trying to get different texts built, 
to tech built. We have the grants program to fund different technologies, technical education, like where Bruno is to educate people about different technologies. And then, you know, a fairly large like marketing and communications function. Um, on top of that, which is like actually like almost 30% of, of the foundation, we have uh, a really high quality research team. And they're responsible for basically um, specifying Polkadot, like specify, it's not just one protocol. When you actually think of Polkadot, it's a collection of, of, of several different protocols. So, you know, they're responsible for, for making sure there's the theoretical underpinning um, to the protocol actually working and actually working in a safe way. Um, and then parity technologies is the group that's actually implementing the protocol. So when you actually think of like, okay, like what's the relationship between Web3 and Parity? Well, Parity is basically one of the implementation teams and actually the biggest and you know doing the most comprehensive work that's implementing the core Polkadot protocol. And so they're about, I think like 120 people now. So, so quite massive. Uh, in Berlin, the majority of, of that group are developers and the majority, like the vast majority of people there um, you know, work primarily on Polkadot and Kusama. Thank you, Dieter. This was a um, great overview. And for people who joined the first time to this kind of event, um, let's discuss a bit how can people get involved in the community? What are best ways for developers or even non-technical people to get involved, to contribute, to maybe even do an event like we do it right currently? And on the other side, what are also some, some um, tools and contents people could read or learn about when they want to get involved in a community? And Bruno, maybe you want to start to answer this question. Well, um, there are several ways. If you're non-technical, the Polkadot Ambassadors program is amazing. Um, it, is, it is spearheaded by Dan and Hutch from our um, basically growth team. And they've been doing some some incredible work. Like we've we've got communities all over the globe right now, and you can join any of them. Um, and they will kind of onboard you into the ecosystem, help you start uh, with whatever you're proficient in. So if you're not a developer, you'll you'll be given non-technical resources. If you're a developer, you'll be pointed to technical stuff. So joining the community is really easy, streamlined, and like done really professionally. And as far as technical users, well. Uh, there's really no better resource than like if you want to know everything about everything then you you should probably read the wiki from top to bottom that's wiki.polkadot.network um not a lot of people would do that because it takes a few days to absorb all of that um the better approach is to go to softtrade.io and um you should probably try to go through the first five tutorials there so it's substrate.io slash tutorials and um those will take you from zero to something in a very short amount of time, in like 20 minutes, you'll have something set up on each of them. Um, that's that's a, that's a great way to kickstart your substrate development kind of path. And through that, you will also learn to interact with any substrate-based chain like Kusama or Polkadot. Um, there will also be other opportunities. We're publishing some front-end stuff uh, soon. Um, there, there will be a quick starter on for, for Vue.js that, that uh, gets combined with the Polkadot.js API so that you can connect right to it. There already is a very simple front-end interface based on React that connects to uh, the Polkadot API. And all of them let you change which chain you're connecting to. So you can start building the front-end applications that users would, what would want to use, you know, uh, the normal users, not the not the protocol developers. Uh, as Dan put in the chat right now, Substrate recipes are also amazing. So these are uh, being hosted by Joshi uh, from Parity. He also has a Substrate seminar every Tuesday. And I think one was just an hour and a half ago. Um, he has this exploratory vision of Substrate where he writes these recipes that dive into uh, really specific use cases for developing on Substrate, and he'll take you through the whole process of building something really specific and interesting. So there's a bunch of resources. And of course, if you want to stay on top of things, when people uh, publish new new stuff, I will post all, all of those in .leap, uh, shameless plug, .leapsubstack.com, subscribe to the newsletter, and I'll, I'll tell you about any new resource that we, resources that we get. But for now, just check out the ones that were posted in the chat. 
um, especially the Polkadot light paper will give you a great intro and then you can dive into the substrate IO or just try experimenting on your own through the tutorials. I highly recommend the tutorials. On May 14th, there was the Polkadot Belgrade hosting and if you're interested in that, check it out as well on Crowdcast. Lastly, if you want to learn more about governance at Parity, please check out Parity and Friends on Crowdcast here. The Web3 Foundation has launched an open grants program to run alongside the general grants program. It is funding projects that support the Polkadot ecosystem up to 30,000 US dollar administered in cryptocurrency. Chorus One is one of the projects that has received those grants by the Web3 Foundation to develop parts of a bridge that will enable Substrate and Cosmos SDK based blockchains to interoperate as part of the fifth grant cohort. So don't hesitate to apply and learn more about staking on the seminar on June 9th that you see here by Jonathan Marcus. Thanks for your time and interest and see you next month again.